Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center's new series, Art Appreciation. What is art appreciation? Well, what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at artworks by either a group of artists or an individual artist, and you'll learn about that artist's life and about the movement the artwork belongs to, like Impressionism, Expressionism, and to learn a little bit about the subject matter. Because the more you learn about a piece of artwork, the more you can come to appreciate it. So we're going to be looking at some landscapes today, painted by four very different artists. Let's see what we have. We're going to start with the artist Georgia O'Keeffe. She's an American watercolorist. She's known as a modernist painter. She made these paintings of, of this mountain. She made many paintings of this mountain. The name of this painting is Ghost Town. And she would take her car and drive into the desert and paint before most women even had their driver's license. So, and if you notice, the other painting that we have of Georgia O'Keeffe, look how different that is. She's using a way different color palette with that one. One feels warm. Can you guess which one feels like it's a hotter day than the other? Because on the one with yellow, yellows and oranges, those are warm colors. They're going to make you feel like the environment is hotter. So, Georgia O'Keeffe was one of the first women that got a high price on her painting and so as a woman artist we owe a debt of gratitude to Miss Georgia O'Keeffe. But there were other painters who also made mountains. The artist Paul Cezanne made these paintings of Mount St. Victory. Now we got a bunch of mountains. Georgia O'Keeffe did her mountains too and yet look how differently these paintings are. Georgia O'Keeffe's the brush strokes are very smooth, but when we go down to Cezanne, his brush strokes are very different. He's a post-impressionist. This means that he's using color in an unexpected way. He's not chained to the tree must be brown and the sky must be blue. He can paint the many colors that he wants. He also has very loose brush strokes. So here we have two artists both making mountain scenes in different parts of the world at different times of the world and look they're all beautiful. Now we got a couple other artists I'd like you to take a look at. This artist her name is Gabriella Munter. Gabriella Munter is from Germany. She had a famous boyfriend named Kandinsky. She always was a little sad because her paintings were never received like his because back in her day, women were not allowed to go to art school. But she was born in a family that had a lot of money, and so she took a lot of lessons. And she made these beautiful paintings. Now, this painting is the name of the town, and they're both the same town, but painted really, really differently from one another. Uh, she also uses really high horizon lines. The higher your horizon line is, that's where the sky meets the land the more distance you're portraying. So her paintings appear to go on forever and ever and ever. She uses black outline a lot in her paintings as well. Now, Gabriella Muncher was an expressionist painting. That meant that she was more interested in expressing the feeling of that moment. She paint, painted very quickly because she wanted to capture the atmosphere, how that moment in time made her feel as she was painting it. So you can see these two paintings also have a very different color scheme. One is more on the blues and greens and the other one has a lot more of the oranges. Now when you put an orange and yellow next to each other, both colors will seem brighter. They're complementary colors. Those are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. And they're easy to remember because red and green are Christmas and they're complementary colors. Purple and yellow we think of Easter, and those are complementary colors. And the only two colors left are orange and blue. So you can see how an artist can put these colors next to each other and the colors vibrate more. Now our last artist for the day is Paul Gauguin. Paul Gauguin was from France. He was a lawyer. And at one point in his life, he said, you know, I'm just not happy being a lawyer. 
so he became a painter. Most of the paintings he's famous for, he painted while he was in Tahiti. In fact, the one painting is called The Road to Tahiti. Now, he didn't just live there and paint the people. He got very involved with the people who lived in Tahiti. At this time in history, the missionaries were coming, and they were trying to change their belief systems. Now, Paul, Paul Gauguin did not think that was fair, and he even got in a fist fight with the missionary because he thought that he should let the people be and believe what they wanted to believe. The other painting is called Land of the Gods. Now you can see where Gauguin really used this complementary color trick quite well. Look at the way he generalized or simplified the reflections that are in the water. Look at the way that he has the oranges and the blues next to each other. So he also was not constrained by naturalistic color. It wasn't important to him that it looked like a photograph. Back when the camera was first invented, all of these painters at first were really worried that all of their work would go away. But in fact, the camera liberated artists to pursue all different ways of showing us how to make art. So in a lot of ways, they have a, a debt of gratitude to the camera. So when you look at a piece of artwork, I'd like you to take your time. Really study that piece of artwork. Don't just glance at it. Look at every corner of it. Think about where the place was. Who was the person who made this? Why choose this scene to do this? Because there's a lot of really great information that we can be found, like what's going on in the world when this painting was being made. So I hope you enjoyed our little walk down art history, studying the artist Georgia O'Keeffe, Paul Cezanne, Gabriela Munter, and Paul Gauguin. Next week, we'll have different artists for you to take a look at. Thank you for joining us for Art Appreciation by the Canoga Park Youth Art Center.